Police Civic Schools challenge to provide acquittals. East Civic Provincial Administrator farewelled. And back to school challenge for youth. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Sunday's news. All schools in East Sipic province have been challenged to provide acquittals for all educational funding they received from the provincial government. Governor Alan Bird says over the years, funds have been misused by schools with no proper acquittals provided. He says these are public funds and they must be acquitted. He further highlighted plans to change their approach on how these funds are given to schools. We are going to sit down now by me decide which school am because there's no money here, M plus threatening classroom, threatening house for teacher. Ah, M plus there's no something here. Fixing or something in school. Some schools get their money and they misuse it. Yeah. Headmaster, when they bought semen, two plus are misusing this lama. Give me your side. <coughs> if you mean by changing and walking lump sum, one can say now you mean walking no LLG, and we will do the same thing. So instead of calling name the school na game game, you may bung him. You said school you got need, you come na you come na compete na kiss. Justify to us why you need the money. We will not just give you a free ticket. And public money, we have to account for it. Every time he's asking, you said a school sim 200,000, 200,000, 200,000. Can you account for it? Zero. Brugam ta sol sakam na give him a quitel blong. Messi Collins are coming again, Marco Vital Blumen, and I think Passa. Three plus schools are also coming again, Marco Vital. We don't see anything from the other schools. Tomorrow is the first day of school for all government schools throughout the country as parents and students in Port Moresby rush to purchase school uniforms, socks, bags and other school items. This was the scene yesterday at Tango Boroko. A large number of parents and students rushed into Tango to get their hands on the uniforms. Tango is the only distributor of school uniforms in Port Moresby, allowing parents and students a one-stop shop. But with a huge crowd, security had to allow batches of people onto the second floor where the uniform section is located. One parent said they were doing last-minute shopping for their eldest daughter because of limited budget. Another said her work schedule did not allow her to shop until today when she asked to take the day off. But whatever the reasons, many parents throughout the country are making sure their children are equipped before starting school. ECP Governor Alan Bird has highlighted plans to upgrade all feeder roads in the province by the end of this year. Some of these roads have deteriorated over the years, making it difficult for people to access. The province will be using its PSIP funding for this year to help fund these road projects. Some of these feeder roads highlighted by the governor include the Kiniambo to Yanzan Road, Petiko to Nungwaya Road, and Kusawun to Timbunke Road. Other roads include the Engoram to Marienbeg and roads in other parts of the province. Like now, you may talk here, yeah. Kiniambo go down along uh, Yanzan. <coughs> province will open that one now. Petiko Nungwaya, province will open that one now. Kusam, this year we finally have the money, we'll finish it all the way down to Timbunke. Start long. Maybe Engoran won't set long, Marin Beg, Engoran Lokis. We have to open that important area. The Kusawon to Timbuke Road and other roads in the Sipik Plain area is a vital link connecting villages in the Sipik Plains. These roads have deteriorated with little to no attention given to it over the years, making it difficult for people to access. Recently, the governor visited parts of this feeder road with plans to upgrade this vital link. PSIP funding will be used to fund these road projects and they plan to have these roads completed by the end of this year. Uh. We work, we already have six million local time on road we work. One million the last year, five million now. My brick me blog in plan the road finish. When I something in Sotia, PSIP by going side. Yambi, Engoram Town. We will fix what we can by the end of the year. Next year, you will walk in Arla Sandy. 
the governor further appealed to local level government presidents to work together to achieve something for the province. He challenged president to have long term plans for their local level government areas with something to solve for by the end of this year. He says the East Sipic provincial government is about good governance, transparency, and accountability. Now, you blow leader of Sipic, me like him, you blow him as Rosim Slawanta and Frank Nine. You blow presidents, you blow Holim Slahamas money now, yeah. Use him state law. Producing result blowing. Straight in one place. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. A Sipic provincial assembly meeting in Kingston Heights today. Leader Sipic provincial assembly have farewell their provincial administrator, Dr. Clement Malau, who will be leaving his post on medical reasons. The governor, in his remarks, acknowledged the provincial administrator, saying the province was lucky to have him. The provincial administrator highlighted some of his achievements, but there are still more tasks to complete before he goes on sick leave. The East Sipic provincial administrator, Dr. Clement Malau, was farewelled in a small luncheon attended by all local level government presidents and staff from the provincial government. The provincial administrator will be leaving his office on medical reasons. In a toast to the provincial administrator, the governor thanked him for his contribution to the province. He's, he's, he's a global citizen. I'm a citizen of the world in Islam. I can go to any other world as We are so lucky that he did that. Dr. Clement Malau is no stranger to the country's public service. He was once the secretary to the Department of Health and a professor and dean to the Faculty of Medicine and Health Science at Divine Word University. He was appointed as the provincial administrator for the province in 2018. In his tenure, a lot has been achieved for the province. Dr. Malau says he was motivated to support the governor who has aspirations to help the people. Some people are making something you have the hope of them public servant by Some of his achievements for the province include the provincial plan for the province. He says he is working on a corporate strategic plan for the province. However, he highlighted low public service capacity as an hindrance to service delivery. Sadly, we in the public service have not that capacity. And we, we still must apologize to the I feel as if we, I have as a person, con contributed very little, very little. Because we feel him, the system has failed for a long time. The provincial administrator further highlighted plans to have all acting appointments permanent before he leaves his post. He further highlighted plans to have all local level government managers better trained so that they can support local level government presidents in service delivery. But they really think about service to the people. <coughs> and support organ allergy managers or organ allergy presidents, good, not haphazard, their support properly. With proper evidence, proper wave-long constructive meeting by Ubla, all must stop supporting Ubla. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. Heavy rainfall in the nation's capital and central province has seen flash floods flowing over the road, blocking off road access. In a video sent to MTV News, cars travelling on the Magi Highway had to stop on both sides of the road and wait for the flood waters to subside. And the only way to get across is with the help of a tractor. This part of the highway in Sebora, near Tubusera in the central province, has always been affected by floods every time it rains in the central province. Crossing this portion of the road is always difficult as drivers could not see oncoming vehicles posing a threat to the traveling public. Over the years, flooding in this area has also affected food gardens and people's lives, as well as people traveling on this stretch of road. You're watching National MTV News. When we return, we'll bring you this Sunday's A Closer Look. Stay with us. Welcome back. It has been an amazing journey. These were the words used by Stephanie Wanuhali, a New Zealand missionary, to describe her first experience in PNG. 
She's come out to the media stating that Papua New Guinea is not what is perceived by the majority of overseas countries. She spent the last two months among children in the settlement of Eight Mile with her Papua New Guinean husband as missionaries and says her love for the children in the settlements of Eight Mile has grown as she volunteers her time in helping them in educational classes. This is a closer look into her life and experience. Stephanie Wanuhalu from New Zealand has spent the past two months living among her husband Joseph Wanuhalu's family at Mount Zion 8 Mile in the nation's capital. Although prior to coming to PNG, she has heard so many bad stories through the media. It has been quite an amazing experience, she says. Don't be fearful to come to Port Moresby. This is a beautiful place. There's so many things to experience here. Um, you've got Nature Park, Adventure Park, you've got the Kokoda track, you've got um, amazing churches, you come and experience, you know, the deep Christian faith that they have here and their worship music and, and how they are here. Both Joseph and Stephanie have been married for almost two years and came back to PNG from New Zealand as missionaries to help the youths in the city. Today, they have been running early childhood and adult literacy programs for children and young adults of 8 Mile. Missing out on an education and in my world where I come from, education is so important. And we really want to lift these children up. This is on my heart at the moment as, as missionaries. This is what's on my heart, to be able to call on other missionaries or other people that can step forward and help us uh, get these children to school every day and back again safely. The couple has plans to help young men in the area through different programs such as seasonal work in New Zealand. So, but if, if, if the government, not just the overseas governments, not just New Zealand governments or any other governments, if our governments could make uh, you know an avenue or, or a, uh, uh, sort of like a stage so that all our working class age group like can ever job would be so so helpful. Pastor Timothy Yapa of Mount Zion AOG Church is grateful to have the one who hallows as part of his congregation over the past two months. Involved too much at the beginning because we got plenty of work over him so uh, that's why me me do thank you a lot. Stephanie come inside one of the idea and a tin tin law. I'm can help him me law. Some la some la can mark law. Maybe I can stop good law. This La Mountain. Stephanie says she has hopes her experience will help those in her country and around the world to come and experience the rich culture and beauty of Papua New Guinea. It has been absolutely amazing. That's something that we've lost in the Western world. Um, you know, in the in the food and how they work together as a family and they live together as a family, which we don't see as much in the Western world or in New Zealand or Australia and those places. And Truka Sports is next. Details after the break. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Community sports organization in the Port Mosby suburb of Waigani has taken the opportunity to organize the local youth to participate in sporting competition to engage the youth in meaningful activities. The Back to School Challenge wants to keep the school-aged youth active and participating in constructive activities. The Back to School Challenge, community sports competition, held its first trial matches over the weekend as organizers gauge the interest of teams from around the Port Mosby suburb of Waigani. With the men's touch rugby and volleyball matches being played, the competition organizers have been encouraged by the positive response shown by the neighborhood youths. 
The competition will run for two weeks as the teams involved in the touch rugby and volleyball play round robin matches before the finals. Competition, uh, we basically came up with the idea say a month ago, uh, just to keep the kids busy from you know all these uh, illegal activities. And most of the kids here are school students, especially, so just to keep them busy and focus and look forward to going back in the school. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just uh, mostly uh, from the. Waigeni area, uh, two teams from uh, Telecom Compound, three teams from Morta, and one from NCC. So it's roughly about, say, 20 men's team and uh, 12 ladies' team. As the name suggests, the Back to School Challenge aims to involve school-age youths from around the Waigeni area in social and constructive activities, such as healthy sporting competitions. We do have the Master Draw coming weekend. We start the two-week competition starting next Friday which will run for two weeks. The interest has been very because most kids, uh, some are underage, and they always like to follow the big boys into the rugby field. So in this touch competition, it gives chance to everybody to take part and they show their whatever skills they have. Proper, we do run robin games next weekend, and then we get into the knockouts the following weekend, and finals will be on Sunday. Play for, uh, say, uh, prize money and a uh, few trophies and just say some school uniforms or something just to help the kids with the school fees and stuff. So this is basically the idea of the competition. Haksti Lovai, Chukai Sports. The new recruits at the SPP and Hunters this season say the training at this level is high intensity. Jokedi Bire, an exciting prospect for the team, says discipline is important to achieving set goals for this season. SPP NG Hunters coach Matthew Church this season had the chance of a hands-on approach to picking the team. With exciting prospects from the Digital Cup competition, new recruit Jokedi Bire says Church has introduced the Digital Cup recruits to high-intensity training. Matt Church is, I see that he focus all about the skills and how you can, you know, play with the speed of the game. So it's, the Hunters training is very high-intense and we focus about how you can play f fast and flat. That's why we go about then. Our, my personal, I just give best in the training. And we, I follow what he encouraged me and asked me to do. And I hope for the better. Bira says having the discipline and hard work, along with commitment and dedication, is the key to a good 2021 season. It's discipline, we're consistent in discipline. And time management in and off every day it's when we wake up in the morning we know that you know big things coming up and we can't waste the time so every day we work hard and we maintain the consistency of working hard and discipline also Philly Sukina, Chukai Sports and that ends Chukai Sports the weather details after the break Chukai Sports True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Numerous rain showers and drizzles in Port Moresby. Occasional rain showers and drizzles in Daru. Cloudy with occasional rain showers and drizzles in Kerama. Cloudy with rain showers and thunderstorms in Alotau and occasional rain showers and cloudy weather in Popandita. In the Mamasi region, chance of a few showers, then cloudy in Lee. Some rain showers and drizzles in Medang, a few rain showers, then cloudy weather in Wewak and rain showers, then cloudy weather in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, a few showers, then partly cloudy weather in Loringa, partly cloudy with evening showers in Kokopora, Baobuka and Kaviang, rain showers and possible thunderstorms in Kimbe. And in the Highlands region, occasional rain showers and drizzles in Mount Hagen, rain drizzles, then cloudy weather in Goroka, Kundia, Wamendi and Wabeg. There is a renewal strong wind warning for the coastal waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Island through Gulf of Papua to Kerama and Yule Island, Port Moresby, Hood Point, Arama Coast, 
Samar Island and all Milan Bay Province Islands, including Finchhoff, Tavitias, and MP Straits, CRC and Long Island, Karkar Island, Medang, Bogia, Tawiwak, Itape, and Banimore, Northern PNG Indonesian border, and all NGI waters and the ocean waters of Coral, Solomon, and west of Bismarck Seas. Strong west to northwest winds of 25 to 33 knots with gusts to 47 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours, causing rough and high seas. All small crafts and boats are advised to take necessary precaution before going out to sea, especially in these areas under strong winds. There is also a renewal gale force wind warning for all coastal waters of South Port Moresby to Hood Point and Aroma Coast to Samari Island and all Milne Bay Islands, including Finchhoff and Vitias and Dampier Straits and south of West New Britain, including the ocean waters of the Coral and Solomon Seas. Strong west to northwest winds of 34 to 47 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours, causing very high and rough seas. All small crafts and boats are strongly advised to stay away from the mentioned areas during the forecast period. Also, heavy rain and flood warning advice, heavy rain showers and isolated severe thunderstorms forecast, forecasted to occur and persist over Gulf Central and Milne Bay, also parts of Moore Bay and West New Britain provinces. Heavy rains and flash floods are forecasted to occur and persist over the areas from yesterday and will continue for the next 12 hours. All affected communities and areas are asked to take the necessary precautions. People should be watching and be ready to evacuate if necessary. Our forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PEG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Islands and Kerama to U Island and Hood Point, also Aroma Coast to Samar Island seas of 2 to 2.5 metres. Waters of eastern and western Milne Islands and with waters of Finchhafen through Vitias and Dampi Straits to CRC and Long Island seas of 1.5 to 2.5 metres. Waters of Samara Island to East Cape and Cape Bogle through Hue and Gulf to Finchhafen, with waters of Long Island to Karkar Island and Wewak to Aitape to the northern PNG Indonesian border, including waters of Manus and its western group of islands, and with waters of New Ireland to Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Water of East and West New Britain, seas of 1 to 2.5 meters. A look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea. Seas very rough to high seas with west to northwest winds at 25 to 33 knots with gusts reaching up to 47 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas moderate to rather rough with northwesterly winds at 20 to 13 knots with gusts towards the west. In the Bismarck Sea, seas slide to moderate with north westerly winds at 10 to 20 knots and in the Pacific Ocean seas slide to moderate with northwest to northeasterly winds at 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's the way it is this Sunday, the 31st of January 2021. On behalf of the entire MTV News team right around the country, pleasant viewing. Stay safe. Good night.